Let's talk about data gathering with Excel. You could do a lot of types of data gathering. There's counting, of course, and you can also do some measuring, measuring of distance, measuring of weight. You can also do timing, timing of uh, speed, for example, of various things going on in class. You can also do a lot of comparison. Here's a heart rate at rest, heart rate after skipping, and you can do a comparison of those. It's also possible to do a, a data gathering using fundraising. What's the most effective way to raise funds? Here's an example of a data gathering you could do in a kindergarten class. Ask your kids to do a poll of their favorite sandwich for lunch, then uh, insert, choose a uh, column graph, uh, columns, and there you go. You have cheese, peanut butter, and peanut butter and jelly. Even the kids in elementary school kindergarten can figure this out. Go up to fill and put in a solid fill and you can have your uh, bars uh, color coded as well. I just did one for you to, as an example. Let's look a little more advanced. Oh, uh, and by the way, you can also change the uh, titles of these uh, charts as well. Favorite sandwich ah, types. Here we go. When the kids get a bit older, you can have them measure things in class. Let's say you're growing beans in the class. I'm going to set a, a weekly measurement. We'll start with February 1st and then move on to February 8th, about seven days later. And using our autofill, I can highlight those two and then just drag down for a few weeks. And there we go, up to March 29th. And you put in your inches, the growth that the students have noticed in a plant. Now let's say we want to graph this. I'm going to highlight all those bits of data and hit insert. And let's say, I think perhaps, a, yeah, a cone graph might work the, right now. Now let's say we want to change the color on that. It's pretty easy to do. Click one of those bars, go up to uh, fill, and you can do a solid fill. Or uh, here's one, a picture fill. We can put like a greenish sort of thing because it is a plant. Ta-da! Very easy to do. Now what if we want to do a comparison? of a different kind of bean or a different location or maybe one bean that's been put through an x-ray machine and one that hasn't. Um, here's an example. We'll do one in the sunny side of the school and one in the shady side of the school. And of course the shady side uh, growth might not be nearly as fast so I'm just going to put uh, an increment of about half an inch or so for each pa passing week. Uh, whip to the bottom here and then when I highlight all of those areas, oh, now here, here's an example. All I have to do now is just drag the data across for our graph, and now we have the two lines. It's a little hard to see, so I'm going to change that from a bar graph to a, um, well, what could we do? A uh, line graph. So I'm going to go to change the chart type, and I'm going to choose a uh, line graph with the point showing. Now the first time you see it, it's going to look a little ugly, but you get the idea. It's very easy now to compare the sets of data. I'll try something else, data gathering from weather. I used to tell the story in the class of uh, automatic buoys that are located off the uh, east coast of the United States. They're actually located all over. And you see this one I'm circling at the bottom. Well, it was a few years ago with my one of my classes. They, we were talking about these buoys, and they also noticed that a hurricane was coming in. I just overlaid the uh, satellite photo right over top. And here's the interesting thing. So the kids came in the next day knowing that the hurricane was going to pass right over the buoy. So we set up the times, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and all the way down. I'm typing a little slowly today. And as the kids came in, they, uh, we looked at the automatic buoy online and saw the wave height. It was about eight, half a foot at 8 o'clock, a foot and a half at 9. It was really churning up, two and a half feet, got all the way up to three feet. And at noon, the kids came in, it was down to 0.25. Of course, some of them said it was broken, but it couldn't have been broken if we were still getting the data. By 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the wave heights got up to 1, and after the kids left, it was at 3 o'clock, they were all the way up to uh, uh, three feet again. So you can graph this. Basically what you have here, the kids were able to graph using wave heights, in effect, the cross section of a hurricane. The hurricane passed directly over that buoy and we were able to see the eye of the storm in numerical form. That's data gathering.